Welcome to the Dementia Researcher Podcast. It's Adam Smith here, and today we're throwing away four years of tradition, trashing the usual end-of-year festive highlights reel, and instead bringing you a very special show talking with our brilliant team of research bloggers. In an unscripted and possibly disastrous show, we're going to be talking about our personal highlights from the year and what we're looking forward to in 2023 and getting to know our bloggers a little better with some offbeat questions that may reveal more about the people behind the blogs. It's my pleasure to introduce the brilliant Dr. Gaia Brezzo, the amazing Dr. Anna Volkmer, the incredible Dr. Kemar Amin Ali, who is actually about five seconds behind everybody else, so that's why she's not waving, uh, the resplendent Dr. Sam Moxon, Hello. The dazzling Dr. Connor Richardson. Hiya. The stunning Dr. Yvonne Couch. You wondered what you were going to get then, didn't you? <laughs> the astounding Beth Eyre. Almost certainly soon to be doctor, one of the few people here without that, that little detail. The extraordinary Dr. Ida Suarez-Gonzalez. And sadly, apologies from today come from Hannah Hussain. Clarissa Glebel and Nathan Stevens, three other bloggers who I'm sure you'll recognise who sadly can't be with us. Hello, everybody. Hello. 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 <laughs> well, normally we do a round of introductions and this could take a while with so many of us. So let's keep this quick. And Sam, you go first. Yeah, so I'm Dr. Sam Moxon. I'm a research fellow. I work in mostly 3D bioprinting, interested in trying to develop models for studying diseases without heavy reliance on animals. So that's that's where my research sits. Um, so you can keep an eye out for my stuff in the monthly blogs and the occasional podcast. Uh, Anna, well, you go next. Yeah. <laughs> um, so hi, everybody. My name's Anna Volkmer. I'm a speech and language therapist and a an advanced NIHR-funded advanced research fellow. I'm based at UCL and UCL8, and I'm particularly interested in developing... Um, interventions, speech and language therapy interventions for people with primary progressive aphasia and other dementias. And you can also read about, read my blogs and listen to some of the podcasts that I host um, for uh, Adam. That's a subtle difference, isn't it, from senior to advanced? Is what is there? What does that actually actually mean? Is that you know you get advanced drivers? You can steer around corners quicker, less oh, yeah. likely to crash. That's it all, you know, when I hit 40, I was advanced and below 40, I was senior. No, I, I believe it's just the difference between the NHR used the term advanced fellowship and the UCL used the term senior researcher. I'm not sure. I think it's the same, 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 different word. Just advancing in age. Probably. <laughs> Connor. Hiya, um, I'm Connor Richardson. Um, I'm an epidemiologist at Newcastle University. Uh, my research is mainly on looking at uh, dementia in population studies, both social and neuropathology risk factors. You had to think about that then, didn't you? Did, it, did bit, you yeah. just forget what you do there? This is <laughs> only se Connor's second time on the podcast, and the last time he had, he was still drunk a little because we were at a conference. <laughs> So he's doing it without the benefit of alcohol this time. Although I don't know, it's two o'clock in the afternoon, maybe. And, and for those who are watching on the video version of his podcast, you can see he is at home. <laughs> <laughs> we, does that mean we can also get dogs joining us? Have you got the dogs there, Connor? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they'll, they'll probably be here at some point. <laughs> I expect a, a highlight. And Yvonne? Hi, I'm Yvonne Couch. I'm an associate professor and Alzheimer's Research UK fellow at Oxford, and I'm interested in the long-term vascular consequences of stroke. I, I want a witty thing to come back on, except you, you, you look very Oxford. For, <laughs> again, you. only for those of the benefit of the video podcast, she's got books behind her. This is a deliberate, a deliberate setting to to add to her academic stature. This is not my office. I would just hasten to add that I have bogarted the office for the purposes of a good shelf behind me. They, and they all look like books from the 1850s. None of them are up to date, are they? Some of them are. They're very, they're really old medical textbooks. 
they're great to read but and, and useful on the shelf, but I don't think And useful. now we know where you get your inspiration from all your blogs that start with a little bit of history. You just walk <laughs> off the back, pull a book off the shelf and go, oh, that's a bit interesting. Exactly. Well, uh, <laughs> Gaia. Hello. Uh, yes, so my name is Gaia Brazzo. I'm a postdoctoral research fellow at the University of Edinburgh based in the Dementia Research Institute. And my work is looking at how we can improve cognition after stroke. So I'm especially interested in the role of neuroinflammation, particularly microglia and monocytes um, coming in following stroke and how manipulating these cells, we would be able to help people that develop cognitive decline from stroke. That's a bit like Yvonne then. Yeah, I was going to say maybe Yvonne, this is the time where we will collaborate more. I do like those stories. Every now and again, somebody go. tells me that they came on a podcast together and something something magic happened. I literally yeah. just opened Twitter and went, I should probably follow Gaia. <laughs> <laughs> well, you mean you don't, don't follow me already, Yvonne? Don't just stop there, because I think <laughs> our next person might also have a, have a foot in that camp. Beth? Hi, I am Beth Eyre and I am a final year PhD student. I'm very close to um, submitting my thesis and doing my viva, so hopefully be a doctor soon. Um, and I research neurovascular coupling in Alzheimer's disease and in mixed disease models of atherosclerosis and Alzheimer's disease. And I'm also very interested in the vasculature and how that's impacted by Alzheimer's disease. So, yeah. I mean, I don't want to jump jump ahead to what's playing in 2023 um, for you either but if, if, i'm guessing you're at that time when you might need to think about a job and yvonne gaia if you happen to <laughs> cam hi everyone i'm cam so i'm a uh... I guess I can still say I'm a new lecturer. I'm a, a new lecturer in biomedical science at Teesside University. My research, I guess I'm another person kind of interested in your inflammation. I guess it's kind of the hot topic right now. Uh, but I'm kind of interested in it from not just like the neurodegenerative disease side of things, but also traumatic brain injury as well. So that's kind of um, what my research interests are. And um, Ida? Hello everyone. So I'm Aida Sorgonfan. I'm a clinical psychologist and neuropsychologist and a principal research fellow at the Institute of Neurology at UCL. And my research is focused on understanding the inter and intraphenotype expression variability of your onset dementia and then on how to use that information to develop targeted and personalized rehabilitation and behavioral therapies. And you're not even in the UK right now, are you? You're joining us f from uh, uh, overseas. From rainy and cold North Spain, yes. From North Spain. Have you got snow, though? Have, have you got as much snow as Gaia's got snow? No, no, lots of snow in the place where I am. I'm very close to the sea, so it is very difficult to get the snow here, but it is cold and rainy. Well, it's... Um, pretty frosty and drizzly here in oxford but we don't have snow um thank you very much everybody for joining us should we start with a christmas a christmas joke seeing as this is christmas today is um is the 12th of december but actually this is going to be coming out the 19th um right festive spirit what do you get if you cross santa with a duck anybody do we, do we dare ask <laughs> go on sam have I'm you not got gonna a guess, guess. No. no i've not got a guess a Christmas quacker. Oh, I should have seen where that was going. Everybody is laughing. Come on, you need to laugh audibly, otherwise. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> no, I think that just encourages the behaviour, Adam. Right? It won't work on a podcast if you all just smile, um, unless, for, except for those watching the video. But, okay, I, I, I don't it. think that's the reason that joke doesn't work. <laughs> what? Burn. Uh, has anybody else got one, got one better? I'm a big fan of cheese jokes. I quite like a good cheese joke. God, he's got one. He just, he's thinking, look, I can tell. It's not Christmas no. themed. So. Oh, okay. Well, I don't know. Yeah. We eat a lot. I, I don't know. I eat a lot of cheese at Christmas. Do you not eat lots of cheese? Cheese is the best all year. It, it is. Yeah. Does anybody I disagree? I bet Sam disagrees. <laughs> Sam oh, no, probably I, can't have. He yeah. can't have cheese. I, I like cheese. I just can't eat it. 
Everybody oh, yeah. who knows Sam's blogs knows he has to watch what he eats. I bet cheese is off that menu. In fact, yeah, I, I do. I do eat a lot of sprouts though. I'm uh, a big fan of sprouts. You have to be careful with sprouts because you can turn into a biological weapon if you eat too many. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you're allowed sprouts. You just banned from eating them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Why, I always get the feeling that sprouts are a bit of a northern thing for those. I, I don't know if it's if it's a northern thing. I grew up on sprouts. Yeah, you just cut them in half, roast them. Bit of salt and pepper. Very nice. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much, everybody, for joining us. And for those who don't recognise these marvellous people, where the hell have you been? Some are regulars on the podcast, but all of them write, narrate, write and narrate blogs for us every month on a whole range of topics, uh, talking about their work, their lives, their careers, and occasionally science. Um, but they are all incredible writers who have very generously share lots about their work and research. So let's start uh, on a high note and ask you what your research career, research or career highlights have been from the year. Uh, Sam, I'm going to start with you. What, what's been a highlight for 2022 for you? I think the things I'm most proud of is got a couple of papers out this year and then managed to land a new job. Um, so moving to the University of Birmingham as a research fellow, I've been able to take my bioprinting work back closer to what I'm really interested in, which is dementia again, and, and moving into projects on bioprinting vasculature. Uh, so I think that's my highlight, is, is, is getting a new job and, and getting the chance to go and try something new. Congratulations. But, yeah. Thank and is you. that with your, ma your mates as well that you were on the podcast with? Uh, no, um, no, no. Last year. May work with them group. at some... Yeah, may, well, I might work with those guys at some point, but no, this is with people that I worked with during my PhD. And also some new people as well. Thank you. Yeah, I'm looking forward and, to it. And is that... And is this a, a good long because of course we're going to talk about contracts and stuff at some point yeah. i'm sure but is this a good a good long contract as well yeah it's going to keep me secure for a while now so, so i'm looking forward to starting nice one that's what we like to hear well that's brilliant i'm back to bioprinting yeah well i mean i'm bioprinting now but it's more to do with the spine so i've sort of taken a a bit of a step away from the brain and the vasculature so i'm looking forward to moving back into that now so oh, Yvonne's, look, you can see motors running around in Yvonne's head. She's already thinking, <laughs> hold on, so if Sam prints, <laughs> if, if Sam prints that and Gaia then brings in that bit and... Yeah. I was just, I, I know people at Birmingham, I was like, oh, I could speak to them and they could speak to Sam and this is the only way yeah. to get any work done, Adam, is to talk to other people. Well, we might have mutual through. acquaintances because I know a lot of people at Birmingham myself as well, so... Talking is good. What about you, Anna? Uh, Anna? Hannah? Anna? <laughs> Give me a new name. Yeah. Because so in so many in so many ways we've seen your books, you've had a tough year. Um, but but also, um, you know, we, we've already seen you've written about your brilliant progression. So what what's been the highlight for you? That has been the highlight, despite all the despite all the um, hard work. It took like at least a year. I managed to get, bag myself this at NIHR Advanced Fellowship. Um, so I've got five years worth of funding. Thank you. I, I don't, I, I, bag, I definitely blagged it rather than bagged it. Um, but I've got five years worth of funding three days a week. So it makes my one day in the NHS, it, it makes it more doable because that doesn't feel very secure in the current climate. But I've got five years worth of research funding. So that's a big highlight. Um, and people will like to hear that because... Clinical Academic Facade is Slipping was our fourth most read blog of 2022, which was one of yours. Wow. I, I, I'm, I'm not going to necessarily say whose blogs were what, but yeah, that was a very popular one you wrote this year, was talking about that concern between, like, what's, how can you still count yourself as an academic when you're, a, when you're back in the NHS? And I guess a lot of NIHR fellows go through that. Oh, definitely. And and then on top of that, you've also meant to be a good partner or friend or parent. And yeah, that's then <laughs> that then often drops off the boil completely. Um, I completely failed as a parent last week buying two pairs of slippers that were both two sizes too small for my children. So, <laughs> so that's how much you've lost touch with your kids is you don't know what their shoe size is. I have zero idea what that the, the actual slippers were great. I bought a pair of Grogu slippers for one, which were amazingly received, and a pair of Totoro for the other, amazingly received, but the actual shoe size was not 
Mm. Not right. That does feel that that's got to be an indicator, isn't it? That you're losing touch with your kids when you don't know their shoe size. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, but now you've got the five year. Now no, that you've got the five year fellowship, I'll show you can... in them again. You know, I'll, I'll actually <laughs> communicate with them for a while now. Do, does that come with some pressure as well? I mean, are you or do, is the pressure off in the first year? Do you think oh, it's okay? But five years to show to show something. That's a really good question, actually. That maybe I'll write that. I'll think about that a bit more and write a blog about that. I do feel some pressure. I do feel some pressure to actually keep getting more funding because a few people have said you can't just sit on your laurels for five years you actually have to get lots of funding as you go smaller pots so that's a little bit of pressure and then the other thing to say is I guess you know when you're juggling a few different things you, to actually make sure I do what I said I do is another thing so I, I'm mindful that five years is still I've there's still um you know what's the word I've, I've st milestones that I've got to hit I can't just um let it happen naturally I've actually got to do it in the time I've said so I have, I have one last question is there an expectation then that you'll you'll get that professor title in that five years um I not I'm far too junior I'm only a tiny baby I've only got my PhD two years ago so I'm nowhere near here I I, I should You've published tons, though. <laughs> I don't think that matters. I, I, so I, I'm way too, I'm way too little for all of that jazz. I'd love it, but I'm too little. <laughs> okay, thanks, Anna. That's a brilliant highlight. Congratulations uh, again you. on your promotion, Connor. Thank you. What's been a highlight for you this year? We haven't seen as many of your blogs. You've only your what are you your one blogging that's been published? You've got another one coming out this week. I know that for sure because I've got to do it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. people have known less about you. Tell us what, what's been a highlight. I'm a bit of a mystery. Um, well, obviously, my, my highlight of the year has been joining the roster of... Oh, Bloggers. you're so sweet, coming on the books. <laughs> I know. Uh, um, but, I mean, apart from that milestone, um, yeah, I had uh, like a few, a few nice papers out this year, and I think... Uh, probably my highlight of this year is just it's been the first year that I've actually feel like I've met real people in real life. Um, <laughs> so kind of going to AIC was a big highlight. That was the first kind of in-person conference I've been to after COVID. Um, and meeting, I've had a chance to meet with collaborators in Sheffield who I've worked with for like three years, but never actually met in person. <laughs> so. Um, so yeah, I think the highlights have just been like actually meeting all these people who I've been working with for years and never actually had the chance to see them face to face before. 2022, I mean, I know we could move around a little bit in 2021, but 2022 does feel like I've seen a lot of messaging this year about people catching up again. And I, I can completely get better. In fact, that's where we met. We met the AIC in San Diego back in, back in July. God, no, August, July. 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 Quite, it's been that long already. It doesn't feel like it was two minutes uh, ago. Uh, before, before I was back in the frozen north. <laughs> you look like you've got a bit of a tan though. There, have you just come back of holiday? <laughs> or is, is it just really cold in your flat, in your house? <laughs> Always cold here. Uh, Yvonne, what's been the highlight for you? Because because anybody who's read your blogs this year would know that you you know. You start every bug by saying, I've got strong opinions on this. <laughs> what do, <laughs> so I, I, not, feeling, what uh, do I not have strong opinions on? It's uh, important to Do you know what? If you opinions. haven't got strong opinions, there's no point in having any. Exactly. There's no point in having the conversation about whatever it is if you don't have strong opinions about it. Um, uh, my highlights for the year are tiny and to do with some of them are to do with other people. So first off is I'm, I work on a hospital site, so they didn't actually let us back in the lab until sort of... February, March this year. So I got let back into the lab full time in March this year. So that was a highlight because I could actually do experiments that took longer than two hours. Uh, so I was very excited about that. And the other thing that happened was my very first PhD student got a fabulous job in New York. So I shoved her off across the pond and she's doing stupidly well, much better than I am, which is very upsetting. And my <laughs> second PhD student had her viva and she's gone back to doing, uh, she's starting a clinical job in Switzerland in uh, the new year. So I've, I've 
proudly got rid of two PhD students. So I would say that is my highlight for the year. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? I was gonna, I was gonna say, well, if we got to the end without any of your highlights, if them all being like, I got a promotion or I published a paper, no. what that said as a, about us as a group of people. I've, I've published, <laughs> I've published nothing and achieved very little this year of personal gain. So I, I would like to put it out there that, that not everybody's getting enormous fellowships and, and grants and papers. I'm, I'm doing nothing right now of use to anyone. I'm just. I'm feel absolutely sure that's not true but also that's been quite valuable because what have we talked about what have you talked about a lot this year we've had podcasts on it we've had blogs on it is the dreaded lack of progress lack of failure lack no of... i was gonna I was, I was gonna say narrative cv oh yes yes that is true it's important to highlight the fact that not everything is about papers and grants etc., exactly etc narrative cv getting out there presenting your work nurturing others presenting yeah. your science these are all i mean i don't know i mean let, let's see if those people who are judging your next uh, applications actually put as much weight on that how that's all weighted i, th I think i'm still a little bit skeptical over yeah, i'm not too. sure if i'm allowed to say that but it's brilliant and let's hope that they do take notice of that because you're clearly doing something right <laughs> that's very kind of you to say and is this also as well so that those people you spread out, you know, you have to pay it forward. They'll, they'll think of you and come back. Yeah, exactly. You it's all about going, I made you vaguely successful. Now you've got a ton of money. Would you like to give me some or do some experiments for me, please? Thank you very much. Wait, was, was it 2022 when you also got a system professor? No, that was last year. And oh, I, I may have highlighted at the time that it does not count for any it's it's a title that I stick in my email signature. I don't I don't get more money, I don't get an actual job. I just I'm I'm a quota of ladies in the department that they needed as far as I can tell. It does I don't think it means that I'm good at anything in particular. Oh, you you do you know what you're way too modest. You really really, really are. Um Thank you, Yvonne. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, well done. That's a great thing to be able to to take credit for. Um, Gaia, what about you? Hello. Um, Connor and Yvonne kind of took both of my... I think you're allowed <laughs> the same one. I'm allowed the same. Excellent. So I also haven't published any papers or have not got any prestigious fellowships, which... Yeah, it's a pressure, but I'm giving myself Wait a second, I had a feeling that your little <laughs> sneaky trip to America uh, uh, this month was, was something was work-related. Why work -related. was it sneaky? <laughs> I, I don't know. It, it felt that when you told me I'm going to America, and it, it felt like there was something on the boil there that you're not really telling, telling us oh, about. Uh, well, it's part of my funding, um, which is nice because they pay for me to go to a nice few places. Um, although we were promised good weather in Palo Alto in California and it was freezing. It was actually colder <laughs> than when I left Edinburgh. So I was like, this, uh, this is a lie. You've sold me a lie. So I, it was yeah. just in my imagination that this was a, a secret job interview. Yeah, no, 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 no it wasn't. Sorry. It was, though, we had to present to the funders to keep our job. So. <laughs> oh, wow. Which funder is that? Because you're so in the is... DRI, aren't you? Yeah, the it's just. Um, yeah, so we're within Barry's group, so Barry McCall, my PI, we have two positions that are funded by the UK DRI, but the other ones are kind of funded by different organizations. So I'm funded by a US charity that's called the Leduc, um, and it's um, quite a prestigious one, so I do feel quite lucky to be on that. Um, lots of great people, uh, lots of money, which, you know, to do science is always handy to have, so I can't complain. <laughs> No, that's brilliant. So, so they were the. Uh, did wait a second. You didn't tell us your highlights yet, did it? I rudely interrupted. No. You. <laughs> I had a sneaky trip to America, which wasn't sneaky. To present your then, work to your to amazing funder, who I'm sure now are just dying to through, give you more money as a result. If only. No, they were like, "You're doing a great job, but you're not going to get any more money." Like, yeah, okay, but I do get to keep my job, which is great. That's... Uh, my main if, if highlight, your highlight, highlight of the year is is getting to keep your job, that's, that's worrying. <laughs> <laughs> Although I mean, it has been a tough year. <laughs> being a postdoc in science, that is no small feat, to be honest. No. Come on, I'm, um, I'm not going to interrupt you this time. Okay. Uh, so my highlight, similar to Connor, I think, was going back to my first in-person conference. 
So I went to Stroke Immunology in Munich, which of course, you know, you obviously look for conferences that are in nice locations. Uh, no, so Munich is a lovely city that I never went to, but the conference is probably the best conference I ever went to. So it was coming back with a bang, um, having sat through loads of obviously online stuff, uh, met loads of great people and collaborators that I'm sure will, uh, yeah, be looking forward to seeing again next year. So that was really been a great experience. Getting out and about. And of course, we're mm -hmm. already, I mean, the conferences are already, we've already had deadlines, haven't we, this year for next mm -hmm. year. So the ARUK Abstract Conference, the ADPD deadline, I think, has been. I saw that, um, get a plug-in for AIC Abstracts are now open for submission. You've also had the the two extra bonus conferences from Alzheimer's Association as well, although I think the deadlines for their papers have been and gone already for the APOE and was it neuroinflammation? those two so um I, let's see when we come back to you for your highlights for next year thank you guy uh beth you've been you've everybody we, you've been in america you've been all over the place tell yeah. us what, what's been your highlights it's been a really big year like because final year is huge like so much seems to happen in final year um it's just one big uh. um so i've got a couple of little things so i got my first first author paper that was really exciting um and i won an award at the ar uk conference that was probably the best thing i think that's happened and then um obviously going to the us to learn some um, really cool techniques and then bring them back to the lab here um so yeah it's been a it's been a good a good year hard year but a we'll, good year will win year while also finishing experiments and yeah. writing i yeah. assume <laughs> You should tell everybody, because I don't even think you wrote it in your blog, why why you've not done this, I don't know. Tell everybody the full the full name of and title of your paper and where it's published. Can you remember uh, the full? You, can I remember the name? I think it's the you, effect. I, mean, I feel like you ought to be able to. <laughs> I should, didn't I? Um, the effect of locomotion on sensory evoked hemodynamic responses. Um, and it's in scientific reports, if anyone's interested in that. <laughs> Go look it up. Any citations welcome, <laughs> gratefully received. Yes. <laughs> Just to, to add to that. And and um, I'm assuming, I mean, this is, no, I'm not going to, I'm not going to say that because we're going to come back to 2023. That's brilliant. Thank you, Beth. That's all exciting. Cam, did you, would you, I mean, we said at the start, your new job, is this, was, what's been your highlight of the year? Um, well, I didn't want to pick it as my highlight because I thought it'd be quite obvious. Um, and I didn't want to talk about publications either. So I picked as my highlight um, being invited to be a panel member for a workshop on playing to your strengths to advance your career progression. And that was at the AIUK research conference back in March. Um, and it I've never done anything like that before. So that's why it was like quite a, an experience for me. Um, and it was interesting because it actually came off the back of a blog that I wrote about leaving academia and then returning. And also the series of podcasts that we did around being a perpetual postdoc that Yvonne hosted. So it was kind of like a, a highlight because it had come off the back of being involved in Dementia Researcher. Um, and it was just a really... Yeah, really interesting experience and good to kind of talk about um, career progression and give some tips and advice. How, how to leave and return was our third most read blog in 2022. That was one of yours, right? I think it was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that I think I think that's the one that they said that caught their interest when when I was invited by AIUK. That's the one that caught their interest, so that's why I was invited. So, yeah. That's going to feel good, hasn't it? Because when you do all this stuff, I guess with the paper, I don't know if you feel the same, so you kind of have all that work and then it's finally published and you can tweet and you can share. And then, it, it, it you know, I think that curve of, of height of how excited you are is a very quick drop-off to your next. There's no nice, long, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? There's no, like, legs in a publication it feels like once you've done it that's it you've just got to move on that you you can't bask in that glory for for very long whereas doing other things like that where 
it feels like you're being recognized um, just for working in the field. Actually, I, I quite like that more, being invited to do something or to go give a talk or to sit on a panel. Actually, you know that somebody's picked you out from that. It's not just you submitting your work. Somebody's gone, oh, what about what about her or what about him? They're doing really interesting stuff. Yeah, when you get invited for things, it's it's a shock because it's like to know that somebody knows that you exist and that they've read something of yours. It's it's yeah. it's recognition that you're contributing to the field, which I think we all we all hope that we're doing. Um, in addition to publishing papers. Yeah, yes. So that's why I picked that. That's why I picked that as my highlight. I think definitely. Brilliant. Well done, Cam. Um, I'm going to quickly move on to Ida as well but you find it hard to choose just just one you can have more than one well I, I i have a couple of highlights i think this has been a good year um and and i think the first one is that i promoted to grade nine this year the principal research fellow and and it is good because it comes with a pay rise so i'm very happy about that but um <laughs> the reason why this is a highlight is is because I promoted to grade nine in an institute with a 45% gender gap in senior positions. So I'm the third woman getting to grade nine in my uh, specific department and the first foreigner. And this achievement is full of meaning for a feminist as myself and also because um, during the process, I, I, and this is the most important part, because during the process, I gained a better understanding of some of the gender bias behaviors that contribute to create barriers for equality and that put women at disadvantage and that contribute to perpetuate that gap. And because I got very angry during the process, and, and I'm a person who thinks that uh, festing on your anger is not good. You need to do something positive to expel your anger. So. Um, once the promotion was effective, I went to speak to the um, Equality and Diversity Committee at the Institute of Neurology, and I proposed them to create a promotions clinic. So we are starting a promotion clinic in 2023, where I will try to create better support in a better environment for female researchers who want to go up for, um, for senior promotion. And, and, and share some of the learnings that I took with me during this during this process this uh, year, um, and also during the months that took to the preparation and putting together the application. And yeah, so I'm 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 very pleased that I found a positive way to ventilate my indignation. And the second thing was, I'm I'm not particularly um, a big fan of of awards. But I received one this year that made me very, very happy because it was an award from the Spanish Society of Clinical Neuropsychology, which is a national body devoted to the promotion of clinical neuropsychology in Spain. And it was my first in-person conference since the start of COVID. Um, and people who know me know that I'm very, very scared of COVID because I have very vulnerable people in my family, so I've been hiding for three years, not attending conferences, but when I was let know that I was going to receive this prize, my colleagues were like, you have to go in person, don't do this via Zoom, it's going to be so bad. So I went there and it was very good for me to be, because you really become very isolated. So it was really a long period of time for me without attending conferences. And it was very nice and very warm uh, fly to Spain to receive this prize from people in your own country because I didn't know that people knew me in Spain. I was, <laughs> usually you leave the country, you start working in a completely different place and it's like, you, you know, I only exist in London. So I didn't know that there was this group of people following my work from from back home and it was very warm and nice. And yeah, and, and I think that's it. That's beautiful. Uh, and I'm um, well done about the promotions clinic as well. Uh, it, um, funny you should mention it because when I've been touting the idea of a second series of podcasts this year about mentor mentees interviewing their mentors about their careers, and that came off the back of a conversation at the AIC where 
uh, getting real life examples of how people had how people had kind of gone through promotions and just what exactly was was needed. You know, do you have to supervise some students? Do you have to what what are the things that are going to add to those credits to get you to that get you that promotion? Because so many um, fairly new postdocs just weren't really very sure. It's not written down. They just turn up and if you're lucky and you have a great supervisor they'll they'll help you and if you're not lucky or you don't or yours is a little bit absent like we know some of them are um you just don't know so i think that's a brilliant idea well done um so if you're at ucl get in touch with ida if you're interested in that for next year and if you're not at ucl and we'll get ida to we'll we'll make her write about that this coming year maybe that's that's a great topic for some blogs <gasps> Woohoo! Well, we've been around the table. I don't know. I, I, should I add my own highlight for the year? I'm not sure. Uh, so, well, we managed to secure funding to uh, allow dementia researcher to carry on, which is a, which is a big deal because we, you know, it's been a tough negotiation. So, um, we from the, I think we'll change the logos and the website and things on the first of January, but we'll have Race Against Dementia, Alzheimer's Association, ARUK, Alzheimer's Society, and the NIHR all as our main funders hosting us within the BRC. So that's good. I mean, that's it's kind of almost feels like that's not just writing one grant application. That's kind of five that all had to somehow come together and contribute. So that's been um, really pleasing and great. Uh, I think that people f- could see the value in Dementia Researcher and things like, you know, the blogs you write, because if they didn't, nobody would fund it, right? So uh, I think it kind of shows that this is, we're doing something, we're doing something right. And, and we've got to, but kind of coming up with new ideas and listening to the community and finding ways to help people is what it's all about. So if you are listening to this and you'd like something that we're not doing, or you've got a great idea for, uh, I don't know, a new feature, a new part of the service, a topic you don't think we're covering enough, um, somebody that you think should be writing for us who isn't do reach out get in touch we're very receptive to ideas and new contributors as well particularly um because i think uh gaia connor you're both new bloggers this year as well aren't you um i ida as well ida had written for us before but i think it's only this year that you've come back and and contributing regularly as well so always looking for new people so do get in touch right uh moving on to 2023 we're we're gonna do this quick quicker more speedily i'm gonna ask you to tell me uh ooh, what are we gonna have people want to know more about you, you see i think they i think they, they need to know more about you as well so sam tell us what are you most looking forward to in 2023 and uh what what will you be watching on telly over christmas you watch we all watch telly right somebody is bound to not have a telly because the scientists uh go on sam what are you watching um and what's your highlight for 2023 what are you looking forward to so what i'm looking forward to is um i'm a very northern lad i've always lived in the north of UK, the uk um so sheffield rotherham manchester huddersfield liverpool so i'm looking forward to the fact that i now live somewhere different i live down in birmingham because for years any time i went out on a day trip i went for like a at home holiday would go to the same place like the Lake District or York or North Wales. So I'm looking forward to now the fact that I've got this opportunity to start visiting places like the Cotswolds, the Brecon Beacons. Well, are you going to move house? Yeah, yeah. You don't have to move house. Well, yeah, I know, but like when, when, when it's like... <laughs> well, you live in Lake Liverpool District, now, don't you? Do you live in Liverpool now? No, no, I've moved down to Birmingham already. So, <gasps> well so I'm currently commuting from Birmingham to Manchester. I'm also looking forward to not having to do that anymore as well. Um, <laughs> But yeah, just, just uh, well, to have well, these new interesting places that are relatively close by to go and explore. And in terms of what I'm going to be watching, I'm not too sure because I tend to sort of burn through a series and then look for a new one. So if it's about rewatching, sci-fi. I think it's about you're time I watch the wild again. You? So, pardon? Sci-fi fan, aren't you? Yeah, well, I just finished Andor, which is phenomenal. Andor was epic, wasn't it? I loved so Andor. I might watch... That was... Yeah, I think I might watch The Wire again because it's been, been a while and I recommend The Wire to everybody. It's a fantastic show. I haven't, I haven't seen The seen Wire. It is it on is that on kind of backlog. backlog. I know, I know. It's on the backlog, backlog that I've not got through, but I did watch Andor. Andor. Yeah, Fargo's which... great as well. You should watch Fargo if you've watched Fargo. Oh, yeah, I've, I've seen all the Fargos. Fargo's. Yeah. I watch everything. I'm, well, I like to passively watch television in the background while I'm working. There's, uh, 
What's that, What's that sci-fi, sci-fi comedy, comedy with, with um, uh, Stephen? Stephen not Stephen Fry. Hugh Laurie. That's, that's there's a new season, season of that out. This oh, last yeah. week. I know what you mean. I can't remember the name of it though. That's a, that's good, a good one. one. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I would recommend anyone to watch Andor. Like, even if you're not a Star Wars fan, it's, it's you don't need to be a Star Wars fan to enjoy Andor. It's fantastic. I agree. Um, um, Anna, Anna. <laughs> let's come to you. Thanks, Sam. So I'll be watching Andor now, but I'm also going to be watching the rest of Wednesday because I'm a bit of a goth, really. Or, yeah, I am really. I was the founding member of the UCL Hard Rock Society. <laughs> 19, when, when did I? Uh, 1999, I think I founded that. Wait, it, wait, it, yeah. it got to 1999 before they had a Hard Rock Society. And they had a thrash metal society. But we found, which we thought was too, they were more into kind of 80s thrash metal. We wanted something that incorporated kind of classic rock with um, new metal. Um, so we we founded that. But, you know, and Wednesday is just, I just love the the gothic look. It's, yeah. It's I'm just... Whitby lad, so I, and I'm, I've, I, I'd be lying if I didn't admit that there's some eyeliner somewhere oh, in the oh. house. <laughs> I could have put some on today, couldn't I? Um, it, I've I've seen it. I finished it. I won't spoil it for you. Um, okay. Yeah, no it is, it is good, though, isn't it? Lots of people watching that. As then nod if you've also seen it and yeah, finished great. it. It's great. Yeah. Oh, okay. So many others. We're not going to spoil it for you. And I'm loving the hard rock representation as well. Fighting yeah. <laughs> a good fight. I do. I, does that mean you've got like a? Have you got a leather jacket somewhere with patches on it? Or a oh, denim. No. So technically, I was more of a new metler, so I've got loads of baggy trousers and tons of keychains and a lot of tattoos that you may never see. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I think I think actually, if somebody would like to write a blog on science tattoos, <laughs> the the phenomenon that is science it tattoos. Will. Maybe I will. Did I show you this? This is my newest. Can you see that? Or is it reversed in the camera? It says talk. No, it's it's right. a speech bubble that says talk. I, I think that deserves a, a blog. The <laughs> phenomenon of science tattoos. Should should you get one? Should you not get one? And if you are going to get one, will you regret it? And then any one of you can send in examples of what you've already got. Are you the only one here with tattoos? I you have don't have to, you don't have to show us them. I also have You've got tattoos, that, either. Yeah, but they, they, they are not like, you know, like. They're not science. Anna's tattoo ones. is like proper advocacy for her profession. Mine is unrelated. <laughs> I haven't got a tattoo either. I quite like the idea. I'm just not brave enough, I suspect. Um, thank you, Anna. That's brilliant. Um, the new tattoo is amazing. And you were sober at the time you got it. Oh, completely. It was 11 a.m. My sister came with her newborn baby. Yeah, it was lovely. You didn't get the baby a tattoo as well, did you? No, no, we did discuss it, but we didn't. <laughs> I, wouldn't, I don't think there's probably rules, even in Australia, about getting your babies tattooed. Exactly, exactly. No, it was, it was, a, they were, it was a very nice, calm experience, so the baby enjoyed just observing it. You know. Well done. Yeah. Thank you, Anna. Connor? What what are you most what are you most looking forward to in twenty twenty three? I am most looking forward to my holiday that I've got booked in May, which will be the first proper holiday that I've been on in about since I was about nineteen, so kind of eleven years, and it'll be my partner's first ever trip abroad because he got his first passport this year. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so that'll be that'll be a very exciting trip. Um, yeah, it's good. It's exciting. Yeah, I've gone, gone to see on the, on the top of music. I'm going to see Florence and the Machine in February, who is my all time favorite. So I'm very excited for that as well. Have you got a a work related highlight coming up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's just you've got a job now as well, and your work's just not really um, on your mind yeah, right now. Um, so I'm doing. Uh, I recently started as a sort of deputy leader on our institute um edi committee um so i'm going to be doing a lot more um edi related work next year and hopefully it's not 100 percent guaranteed yet um but i'm hopefully starting some new research next year on um 
anti-inflammatory medication and dementia risk in the population. So that should be very exciting if all that comes together. Brilliant. Thank you, Connor. Yvonne. I- Yvonne, um, if I had a little award to give you, I would give it to you because you did have the top red blog of 2022. Um, rather sadly, however, it was the one called Great Academic Resignation, um, it, which which is it was very a little popular. bit disturbing that that was the most, but that was our uh, top blog of 2022, so congratulations. Thank you very much. I do need some kind of trophy, please, for, for <laughs> to put on the shelf that isn't mine. <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll dig one I'll dig one out. Um, <laughs> find you an award, uh, but uh, to be honest, all the blogs it was quite hard because every single one of our bloggers, and I'm not just making this up, had a blog that featured in the top ten most read blogs. A couple of you had more than one. I will ab- admit. Uh, some of you have more than one. Hannah, who's not here, her one on uh, fasting diet was like number four. Um, what else have we got in here? Uh, social return on investment came in in the top five. That was um, Nathan Stevens is there as well. I, I think he's a bit biased. I also don't want to put too much emphasis on this because, of course, some of those blogs would have been published right back in January. And some of the stuff you might have only just been published last month. So you can't really compare blogs from the beginning of the year with the ones that end. There's a lot more time for people to read them. And throwing out random stats, 37% of pe- more people this year found our blog through Google and search engines than they did in the previous year. Because we're getting much better at... Ch- I just change... I, what you don't all realize is, is I massively changed the name of your blogs. <laughs> It might appear like that on the website, but what goes through to Google to make sure they find them, they're much shorter, they've got snappier titles because that's what Google finds. Um, What was it? I published one tomorrow. There's a blog tomorrow that's about the market forces, and I think if Google reads that, it's going to definitely assume it's about the economy which it kind of is, but it's more about dementia and the costs of dementia care. So you've got to tweak these things. So well done. Congratulations. That's an award from us. What are your highlights for 2023? 2023. So I'm, I would say I'm about three quarters of the way through a a whole bunch of science, which is intensely frustrating. So I'm kind of looking forward to at least the first three months of 2023. I'm just going to hardcore focus and get stuff done. Um, And I, would actually like to publish a paper on something at some point. So I think 2023, I'm just looking forward to getting some science done. And this sounds weird, but I do actually quite like writing grants. I don't like putting them out there and having them rejected. That's not fun. But I enjoy sitting down and sort of having ideas. Um, And I need to be thinking about the next grant along at some point next year. And I'm actually quite looking forward to sort of sitting down and thinking about people I could work with and ideas that I think would be interesting. And yeah, so scientific, scientifically, there's, I think, a lot going to be going on next year. Some collaborations. Exactly. Brilliant. Thank you, Yvonne. <laughs> oh, what are you watching? You watch telly, right? Uh, but I, I occasionally watch TV. I'm more of a book person. Um, so my... Oh, you, you're also like the most avid listener of podcasts I've ever known. Oh, right. yeah. I get, I get I, text messages from Yvonne day and night weekend saying, what about this podcast? Listen to this. Basically, most of my inspiration for my own blogs comes from other people's podcasts. <laughs> um, well, I, I, I'm in the lab on my own most of the time, and I have my commute is about an hour or so, an hour between an hour and an hour and a half each way. So I have a lot of time to fill, and I have a dog to walk, and so there's lots of, you know, Lots and lots so of things go on. to listen to. You can to. pick a podcast if you don't want to single out a TV oh, show. Oh, no, I can't pick a podcast. There's too many. This That's too exhausting. Because they, they also, mine range from, like, I listen to the sort of... Murder my, mystery. My favourite murder type ones. But I then go on to, like, Freakonomics, the economics one, and No Stupid Questions. But I also listen to, I'm like... I'm going to have to press you. The, what? No, you can't. I'm sorry. I can't. I can't <laughs> pick. Dude. <laughs> Fine, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go with uh, No Stupid Questions because it is very amusing. Go look it up. Thank you, Yvonne. No worries. Gaia? Um, similar to Yvonne, again, I think I've been in this post for a year, but it's taken ages and with a few minor setbacks to build to something 
that is meant to be the main part of my project. <laughs> so I'm really looking forward to starting that in January. Um, I've had the pleasure to work with a lot of different people within the year because I've set up smaller collaborations, which I guess wouldn't have happened if all these setbacks wouldn't have happened. But it will also be nice to have my own project <laughs> that I can focus on um, start January. So hopefully more. So your highlight that. is doing your job. Doing my job, right? yes. <laughs> Is getting a chance doing what I am paid to do. You're most looking forward to just just being able to do your job without yes. any crap or hindrance. Yes, yes, that should be nice. I, I, do you know what? I don't <laughs> think that's that's an unreasonable thing to look forward to, is it? Just being able to turn up every day, not have to worry about about everything else going on. It's an, it's no small ask in academia. No, exactly. There's so much other crap going on that you have to do that sometimes it's quite nice to just be able to do what, in theory, you're paid to do. Yeah, exactly. So I really hope I haven't jinxed myself and everything will start as it should. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Famous last words. Um, exactly. So come on, TV, podcast? Ooh, TV. Um, one of my favourite shows on Netflix is Dark and they've just brought up a new series from the same creators that's called 1899 it's all very psychological thriller mystery so yeah. i would definitely recommend dark if you haven't watched that it's a bit like stranger things but better I'd say a bit, i, I much, started much 1899 better. i think i got about three episodes in and went this is just a bit weird isn't it well oh, wow. that's my no, jam <laughs> <laughs> so there we go that's a tv recommendation from gaia and i'm going to come to um i'm actually going to jump around a little bit now because i think cam has to sneak off and i'm keeping her so i'm going to go to cam now sorry cam i just suddenly saw the time that's all right um so i guess my highlight f for next year that i'm looking forward to establishing my research independence because like that's like a long ongoing process and um <laughs> you know, building collaborations and trying to decide what you want your kind of research niche to be. It's quite exciting, but quite scary at the same time. Um, and I haven't been to an international conference yet since COVID. So maybe I'll, I'll get to go abroad next year to a conference. That would be quite nice. We'll see. <laughs> I don't know. It's all funding dependent. So... I feel like you definitely deserve it. You've just got to pick one out, haven't you? Even if you just pick out one you really want to go. What have we got? I saw that there's a good one on the Gold Coast in Australia, the Australian Research Forum. Anna's suddenly looking up. Well, the conference in Australia that I... <laughs> there's one on the Gold Coast. I think that's in May, I want to say. You've got AIC, of course, in uh, yeah. Amsterdam. Yeah. Yvonne's nodding. Yvonne, are you and I finally going to meet in person? Are you going to be in Aberdeen? Oh my goodness. We've never met. I think I've I know it's gonna be one of those things where you're like, I oh, do you know what? I was expecting you to be taller. <laughs> no, I'm not I'm really short. Beth's really tall every time. <laughs> I was expecting Beth to be shorter than you. Actually, I think no, I don't think I've met you in real life either, have I, Sam? Uh, no, no, we've never met in real life, I don't think. No, I've met everybody else in real life though, except for you, Yvonne, and we live like just round the corner from each other as well. I was in I was in your town at the weekend. I know you keep offering coffee and <laughs> failing to follow through on the, the coffee uh, dates. So. This week is the week. This week is the week. Thank you, Cam, and good luck. I, if, if we can uh, get you in there, you can highlight, you can do the, the, sh the conference highlight podcast from whichever one you finally choose. Brilliant. Uh, Beth, what about you? Um... So tall Beth. Tall, but I think it might have been the heels. You are, you're much I'm not taller. that tall. I'm like, I thought it was quite average. I can't be the only one that said that, though. Other people have must. Yeah, gone, maybe. Oh, you're quite tall. I, don't know. I don't feel that tall. Um, <laughs> it's not a bad thing. <laughs> so I have like two. I have a life one and then a science one. Um, life one. I'm getting married in August. So that's very exciting. Um, and science one. I'm excited to submit my PhD. Hopefully, get it and start a postdoc. So, yeah. The, she, did you see that first then? <laughs> right, without telling... Right, so you don't have to say, because I realise that these things are sensitive. Do you know what your postdoc is and you just can't right, say? Right, yes, I do, but nothing's been signed yet. 
So, you know, I probably just jinxed it. Okay. Um, but yeah, I have something lined up um, to start in the new year, which is very exciting. So O Postdoc starts as soon as that? Yes, it starts um, early next year. That can be a number of different months. Congratulations. So, so that's, that's, a big, that's a big one. That should have been the one for this year. I mean, that's, you got a postdoc before you finished your PhD. Yeah. Yeah. So you better, I guess, you really better make sure you finish that. I know, that, then. yes, yes. <laughs> I'm guessing what is conditional on the other. <laughs> yeah, so um, I have to finish the PhD. So it's a bit of a boost to um, kind of get on with it. <laughs> and getting married as well. So two most stressful things, new job. Are you going to move house I, as well? Do you want to throw that not. in there? Just to I don't think I can take much more. <laughs> keep up the stress levels? <laughs> Enough stress. <laughs> and uh, what are you watching? Um, so I have you finally... Watch TV. I, yeah, I watch way too much TV. Um, I finally <laughs> finished all of Grey's Anatomy. I've never been fully caught up. And I started re-watching it again when I was in America. And I've just caught up. So, um, yeah, Grey's Anatomy. Love it. Do they still make that yeah, show? Yeah, they do. Is that, is that one that... F- yeah. oh, okay. So, so so now you can... You're at that annoying point where you have to wait for new ones to yeah, come Yeah, I out. can't binge it anymore, which is a bit sad. But, um, yeah. I think I did Game of Thrones like that. The first three seasons of Game of Thrones, I could play catch-up and then... till you get to the live ones. Yeah. <laughs> did any... Well, we haven't talked about Game of Thrones. Did anybody watch Ice and Fire? Did you watch that? Did you like that? Is that coming on anybody's recommended list? No. It's behind a bigger paywall, so it's I find it harder to access. It's disappointing. That's behind the sky it. one. Yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. Was it good? Uh, it was good. Expectations and was was pleasantly surprised. There's a bit of a nerd. I quite like. I said my confession is I've never actually watched Game of Thrones. <sighs> well, the problem was I started the wire at the same time and. So I've, I've seen the first three or four episodes of Game of Thrones, started The Wire at the same time, and The Wire just grabbed me more, and so I watched that instead. So I need to go back and watch Game of Thrones. I read, I read the books in about 2009, and so when it became a thing, I got really mad because everybody was all over it. I was like, I've read these already. How have you not caught up? And then I, in principle, refused to watch the TV series, so I have no idea what's gone on beyond the book. I'm super envious. I wish I hadn't watched Game of Thrones and I could go back and watch it again, not knowing what's coming next. I really, it's so good. Go watch it. Um, Ida, sorry. I feel like you've always, you've spent a lot of time waiting for everybody else, but come on. <laughs> I should have, for the second question, I should have gone in reverse order, shouldn't I? Come on, what have you, what are you looking forward to this year? You've got so many exciting projects. Yes, I have exciting projects lying ahead. Um, I guess that I'm looking forward to scale up my research program and grow the team and the network of collaborators. You know, sometimes there are these people who say, well, this business, we are not here to make friends. I'm totally in this for the friends, totally. So um, that is one of the things that I love the most about this job, that you get to know so many people and then become collaborators and then they become friends. And, and it's about meeting. So, for instance, over the last uh, three, four years, I've been nurturing this uh, international network of collaborators with expertise in a wide range of disciplines that are important for my research. And I know nothing about <laughs> like neuropathology or genetics, linguistics, or statistical modeling. Um, and and they, they are phenomenal. They know how to do it. They have the patience to explain things to me. They are keen to collaborate, to link up, to do things together, same values, everybody on the same page. So that's really nice. And in parallel, I have also a network of clinicians, also with diverse backgrounds, passionate about dementia rehabilitation and care. So, you know, they say this thing, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. So I'm looking forward for this big international multidisciplinary collaboration to unfold and multiply in 2023. That feels like a a great um, principle that we could all take forward in 2023. I don't think there's anybody here that doesn't like working with other people rather than working, uh, no, working with other people rather than working alone, is there? Nobody wants to work on their own. Brilliant. 
Well done, Ida. Are you watching? Are you watching telly? How do you have time for telly? You don't have time for telly, do you? I was feeling that question because I don't watch <laughs> TV and I always feel very odd. Go on. What about a book? I feel a bit, a bit like a weirdo, but I can't recommend the film that I saw. What about a video game? Are you no, a video gamer? No, you, do you play that. a lot of Animal Crossings? No, I just, you keep no, making me look weird and weird. No, no, but I can't recommend the film. <laughs> I <don't. laughs> So I watched... Okay, go on. What was, what's your favourite movie? Yeah, so um, I watched this film, Good Luck to You, Leo Grande. Recently, it's the one about where um, Emma Thompson is, is featuring this retired teacher who hires a gigolo, and it is sensational. It's so beautiful. It's hilarious. It's clever. It's strong message. I really like it. So I, I highly recommend it. I really enjoy it. Good luck to you. Uh, uh, is it still on in the cinema? Is, is it out now? Or is it? I don't know. I watched it in the plane the other day. <laughs> I so did Guy. I think it's on Netflix. Great. So get a subscription. If you can't have a subscription, let me know. I'll share my password. I think we can still do that, can't we? <laughs> Until they stop us. Thank you, Ida. Wow. Um we've we're at the like hour mark easily, so we should probably call a wrap on this. It's been a brilliant 2022 full of highs and lows all of our bloggers have been amazing in turning in their blogs on time with their lovely narrations as well if you don't listen to the narrations you really should i i really like hearing hearing our bloggers read their blogs out loud we have a dedicated podcast channel just full of all the blogs there's over 250 blogs in there now that you can listen back to and they're nice and short they're kind of anything from three minutes to eight minutes maybe 12 if it's Yvonne's no, I'm, te <laughs> I'm teasing uh, they're, they're usually about five six seven minutes long you can listen to them while you're kind of you know just nipping to the supermarket out in the car walking the dog they're lovely um, and you'll find those in all the podcast apps just look for dementia researcher blogs then you'll never miss them. Of course, we do have them on YouTube as well, and you can go old school and read them on the website. Um, so do give those a listen. I'm working at the moment on pulling them together into separate playlists. So if you if you kind of really like one individual, you can kind of just subscribe to that one person and never miss them and skip other people if you don't like theirs. <laughs> but I would highly recommend you listen to all of them uh, because uh, they really do bring something um, to the field. They all contribute really nicely to sharing their research or sharing their careers. And you all do amazingly well. Thank you so much. So for anybody who's listening who only listens to the podcast and doesn't ever go near the website, which we know so many of our listeners do, particularly those outside the UK, go have a look at the website. It's Dementia Researcher at nhr.ac.uk. And everybody here today publishes blogs all the time. They're Daily, we have new blogs. Anything else anybody wants to highlight? Is Santa going to be visiting you? Will you all be getting good presents? Anna's... No? I feel like that's out of our control. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much, everybody, for listening. We hope you enjoyed hearing from our uh, brilliant bloggers. So thank you very much, uh, Sam Moxon, Anna Volkmer, Connor Richardson, Yvonne Couch, Gaia Brezzo, Beth Eyre, and Ida Suarez-Gonzalez, and, of course, Kim Alminali, who's had to drop out because she had another thing she had to rush off to. And, and sorry, our other bloggers couldn't be here today. But we hope you've enjoyed listening, and we'll be back um, once Santa's been uh, early in the new year, and we might bring you some highlight, some um, blogs highlights between Christmas and New Year as well. Thank you very much, everybody. Thanks, Adam. Thank you. Thank Bye. Great. And go give everybody a follow. Go give them all a follow. You can find <laughs> details of their bios on the website and in the show notes. Brought to you by DementiaResearcher.nihr.ac.uk in association with Alzheimer's Research UK and Alzheimer's Society. Supporting early career dementia researchers across the world.